What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel today. I think one of my favorite things to do is to be able to take characters that nobody likes to play with or that nobody makes videos on and be able to um, you know, either find a play style or find a way to make them viable. You know, not in every area of the game, but at least make them a usable character. Um, if for no other reason than just to be able to play more characters in the game, you know, with the, the new patch, 12.0, that was one of the biggest things Kabam was pushing was to try to get people, uh, you know, to, to, to diversify the number of characters that they were using uh, for different situations. But a lot of times it just doesn't make sense. You know, if a character is not good, you're not going to take him in regardless of who they're nerfing or who they're buffing. So Gambit, for me, he's always been somewhat of an interesting character. Like, visually, he looks stunning. Like, you, you can't argue that his animations are not cool. He looks like he would be so much fun to play. And I remember when he came to uh, the arena for the first time, like, there was a lot of hype. A lot of people wanted to get him. And then after that first arena and people started playing with him, uh, that died off real quick because people realized that, you know, when you're reading through his abilities, these kinetic charges sound really cool, but they don't actually make any sense, you know, when you are playing the game normally. Um, you know, you can read through the screen here. I'm not going to take the time to explain it all. It's, it's fairly straightforward. But in a nutshell, basically, you hold down block and you can gain these, these kinetic charges all the way up to 10. But for each kinetic charge that you get, it takes longer to get another one on top of that. So in order to do his max damage with, with 10 kinetic charges, the, the problem is twofold. One, to get to 10, you're probably going to have to use a special to stun the character long enough to get to 10, which doesn't make any sense. You know, why would you pass up on damage to be able to do more damage later? It, it just doesn't make any sense. But then once you do finally get, you know, you know let's just say five kinetic charges and you want to use them to boost a special, you have to be able to do a heavy against the enemy in order to activate all that and there's just there's very few times that you actually have enough time to use a heavy a lot of times you actually will end up screwing up or taking damage you know because you're trying to time everything right to do a heavy so ultimately to maximize his abilities is just it's very awkward very clunky and really not part of the normal flow of a fight but I thought, you know what, before I totally give up on him, since we have all these rank down tickets, I'm never going to see him at 550 again. Why don't I go ahead and rank him up to 550, we'll throw him around with a few synergy teams, and we'll see if there's any spot at all that I can, you know, that I can find for him. And obviously I did find a spot or I wouldn't be making this video. When I first started, you know, playing with him last night, I was running strictly a mutant uh, synergy team because they've got a really strong damage synergy if you put them all together. And I was just trying to see, you know, if I've got 10 kinetic charges, you know, how hard will his special 2 hit? How hard will his special 3 hit? Uh, because his special 3 actually, it, it hits fairly hard. I think 15,000 is around where I was at. And then it's got a very long stun, long enough to get in, you know, two full rounds of 5 hit combos. And then that gives you enough time to, to fire off a special 1, which stuns him again. So in the midst of all this kind of just, just playing with the character, I noticed that his special 1 stunned every single time which if you read on his profile you know the character uh, abilities it says that i think it's an 85 percent chance to stun but there was not one time when it didn't stun and i know that for every kinetic charge you have there's two percent increased ability accuracy but a lot of times i didn't even have any kinetic charges and it was stunning every single time so i thought you know what why don't i play him like i would play ronin because ronin's got a hundred percent chance on his special one to stun so my focus was to build a power gain team instead of worrying about you know crit damage and, and damage in general. I just wanted to get the maximum amount of power back for each hit. So the idea was to be able hopefully to continually build up one full um, bar of power and to be able to just use my S1 over and over and over again. So I've got uh, kind of everything timed up here. This is my Winter Soldier and my Ronin. Both have the same power gain team. Uh, they both have four separate 5% nodes, or 5% buffs, so it'll be 20% overall power gain. So I started both of them at their very first stun. And everything is basically the same. It's the same power gain team. They both have roughly the exact same duration on their stun, so they're both getting the same amount of hits in, which I'll cover that in a second. But for whatever reason, and I, I could not figure it out, Ronin gets back just a tiny bit less power than Gambit does 
and it may not seem like a whole lot, but what it means is that eventually you are going to run down below your one bar of power. So when you start this whole stun lock, you, you'll start with basically about one and three quarters bars, and eventually Ronin's will drain down below that. But Gambit, for whatever reason, if I can get a stun lock off and I can get my full nine hits, which I'll break it down here in a second, every single time that gives him one full bar of power, and the stun lock just goes on forever. I, I, I quit it eventually because it was just getting mind numbing. But I think Ronin's was like six or seven stuns in a row, which isn't bad. Don't get me wrong there, it's not bad. But I just, I couldn't believe that Gambit was getting one full bar of power every time. So the way this breaks down, every time I stun, which I'll show you here, it's a medium, light, light, medium, and then I go into a full set of five hits. And you can see there, it gives one bar plus a little more. And every time that you do that, you're able to stun, and it just keeps going over and over and over again. So ultimately, is this practical for Alliance Wars and Alliance Questing? No, because you're not going to be able to get that many power gain synergies. But, you know, I had not done the Master Mode yet for the X-Enforcers, and I, I think that he's going to be probably a really strong character for questing. You know, if, if it's not necessarily a, uh, a fight that's got some sort of special mechanic to work around, if it's just generic questing, uh, you can blow right through it. Uh, what I'll show you here is, uh, this is, I think it's Chapter 3. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Chapter 3 in the X-Enforcers. And he is like the only person that I used for the entire thing. Now, obviously, this does not work, unfortunately, for Iceman because he can shrug off the debuff, the stun debuff. Uh, so you're going to have to come up with something else there. Uh, but for everything else leading up to that, I could use um, Gambit. And as soon as I got, you know, basically, you know, one bar and a half uh, filled up, uh, it was game over because they were just stunned for the duration of the fight. It didn't matter what buffs, didn't matter if they had three bars of power, it didn't make any difference. Uh, they were stun locked until I finished off the fight. The one thing you do have to keep in mind, though, is if you're doing this during a quest, you, you really need to be locked in because the, the margin for error is very, very small when you're doing the stun lock. Uh, you have to get the two mediums and two lights in and then squeeze in that next full set of combos. And if you are not paying full attention, uh, that window is very small and you're going to mess it up. And more than likely, if you've had them stunned for a while, they are probably going to be, uh, you know, in a special three, which may or may not kill you, uh, you know, depending upon how strong the character is or what kind of a node, uh, what kind of a buff they have active at the time. Uh, I say all that because I screwed that up here. This fight's a good example of that. Uh, I don't know. I just, I wasn't paying attention or something. I don't know. I had been playing with him for a while, so everything was kind of starting to uh, mush together. But here at some point, I think it might be this stun coming up here. I, I screwed up the timing, um, and you can see there, he blocked it, and I got hit with an S3, which I was able to survive this, it wasn't anything crazy, uh, but just do keep that in mind. You know, ultimately, does this make him some sort of an OP champ? I, not really, you know, because his, his use in the game overall is actually still so limited. Um, you know, his Special 2 and Special 3 both have abilities uh, that I haven't even really mentioned here. His special 2 reduces ability defensive accuracy by 85% for 11 seconds, uh, which is really, really good. The way that it reads in the description, it says the potency of this effect is affected by class relationship. So I'm assuming that's probably something similar to Black Widow, like a plus 15 or minus 15, you know, depending upon if you have the class bonus or not. You know, which sounds really good, but I, I don't know if that really gives him enough utility. Uh, to justify, you know, bringing him in for any sort of alliance wars. You just have other characters that are so much better options if it's, you know, defensive ability uh, removal that you're looking for. And then his special three, it stuns for 2.8 seconds and it reduces incoming um, health gains and power gains on the enemy for that 2.8 seconds by 70%, which is, I mean, that is really good. You know, I don't know, it's, it's only 2.8 seconds, and there's not many times in a fight where you're, you know, looking to get your special three. I guess maybe if you're fighting characters that you know are going to regen, I'm thinking maybe along the lines of, of special events, um, you know, with timers and things like that. That might be a good area, you know, if you can, you know, get out of the stun and build your S3 up long enough to be able to time that and negate the power gains. 
I don't know. I, I mean, it's all kind of theory. I, I don't think that I'll actually be brave enough to take him into uh, an alliance war, maybe an alliance quest, and uh, see how he does. See how he actually plays in the real world outside of questing with the power gain team. But overall, you know, I had been looking for an opportunity to play him. Uh, and if nothing else, this just gave me an opportunity to use him. I didn't think that not having him awakened was really that big of a deal for this review because his awakened ability affects his prowess buffs, which for this stun lock, the way I was playing him, I mean, the, the buffs never really even came into play. He was so much better locking down a character than it would be for me to take all the time to build up those buffs. So, um, you know, some characters can, can benefit a lot by being awakened. You know, if you were playing this character traditionally, his awakened ability probably would help more. Uh, but for my gameplay, for the way I used him, it really didn't make that big of a difference. I say if you haven't used Gambit for a long time, you know, pull him out, dust him off, give him a shot. He's a lot of fun to play with, at least in this kind of questing power gain team environment. Uh, you know, give it a shot and let me know what you think down in the comment section below. All right, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. As always, thank you so much for the support. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get a video out yesterday. I was stuck about three hours from home in some meetings yesterday. And by the time I got back, I was just exhausted. So sorry, I try to get content up just about every day. Uh, but sometimes life gets in the way. So I'm sure, I'm sure you can forgive me for that. All right, until the next video, have a great day.